Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Today we will be making this clothespin angel featuring blush colored chiffon ribbon. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make these chiffon ribbon angels, we'll start with the ribbon. This is one and a half inch blush colored chiffon ribbon. I got it from Amazon. It comes in a package like this. There are two rolls. So I'm going to cut two 12 inch lengths of this blush color. And then one, uh, here it is. Here's the ivory, a six and a half inch length of the ivory for the wings. So this is 12 inches of the blush and six and a half for the wings. And I have threaded my machine with this pink thread and I'm using a very fine needle to sew it. Um, if the needle is too thick, then it just doesn't work as well. So I'm going to join the ends. I can't tell, I, I, I don't think there's a right or a wrong side to this ribbon. So I'm just gonna join these ends and form three loops like this, quarter inch seam allowance. I've prepared my ribbon. I've sewn these into loops, wing, dress, dress. And I've also made the face on my clothespin. And of course you can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face in my Focus on Faces video. I've also threaded a nice long skinny needle with a double strand of quilting thread for hand sewing. And I'm gonna gather up these two pink um, loops by hand. So I'm folding both of the seam allowance over to one side so that I have something sturdy enough to hold the knot right there. So the knot is there. And then I'm just going to gather up by hand. Now the trick is with this ribbon, you can't sew too close to the edge. It'll just continue to fray. So come down a full um, quarter inch from the top of the fringe, maybe a little more, just to avoid the possibility of your ribbon continuing to fray and then you'll have nothing to, to uh, sew through. So I'm going to go all the way around. Now I'm back to the seam where I started and I'm just going to draw this up, kind of make sure it looks right. It's so cute. I love that little fringe. And then I'm going to place it over the clothespin with a seam in the back, pulling that nice and tight. There's my seam. And you know, the clothespins are a little bit different, but you can use your eye and just to determine how long you want this, how low, you know, you have, there's going to be a second tier. So I kind of like it about like that. Maybe three eighths of an inch. I'm going to secure my thread in the back and then I'm going to hot glue this to the clothespin. I'm going to apply some glue right here and then kind of press these gathers into the glue. And I've already glued the back. That's very secure. And also I distributed the gathers evenly around. Now I'm gonna repeat for this second tier and then I'm gonna add it just above the first one. There's the second tier. It's just right above the first, only about a quarter of an inch shows beneath the top tier. And also I find that sometimes the stitches can show in the front, so I like to wrap it with a piece of twine. I have this gold and white baker's twine and I'm gonna sort of create a, a waistline or a belt here just by wrapping it a couple of times and then tying a bow in the back. I'm pulling it pretty tight. Then I'm just gonna knot, tie, knot it off first and then tie a bow. There we go, it's like a little belt in the front. I wrapped it twice and then I tied a bow in the back and tied the streamers into overhand knots. <laughs> it's not really even, but it's cute. 
Now for the wings, I'm gonna move ahead to the wings even though we don't need them for another minute, but I'm gonna show you that what I want is the seam to be centered like that. And then I will gather the center like this to make sort of like a, a loop on each side for wings. To make it a little bit easier to stay centered on this piece, I've, I've pinned them together. So they're both of the layers are together like that. And then I'm just stitching along the seam, which I have centered. It's surprisingly hard to get the each side, um, you know, even so that each side has the same length and shape. So I just do the best I can. Here we go. I'm going to just stitch through a couple more times and then secure the thread. I have a couple of options for the bodice. This is um, wool felt and I just, I'm using the same color as the dress, but of course you can use whatever color you like. And by the way, this ribbon comes in 30 different colors. Isn't that exciting? I, I usually go for the heart, but I just want you to know that you can just cut a little shape, like a little oval or circle or even a rectangle because the, the bodice doesn't really show. You know, it's very concealed by the sleeves and the arms and the flowers and everything else. So I'm just going to use the heart out of habit and uh, I'll apply some hot glue to the back and then press it right there so that the V of the heart is just beneath her little mouth there and beneath her chin. That looks good. The point of the heart is overlapping the belt a little bit. That's fine. There's the wings. I've completed that. I'm going to leave that for the end. And next is the arms. So I'm using this um, Big Ben pipe cleaners and I've cut a four inch length of this, but you can use any kind of a chenille stem or pipe cleaner that you have, just four inches and then another six and a half inch length of the ribbon. I'm gonna fold it lengthwise and stitch along this edge and I will turn it inside out, insert the pipe cleaner and this will be her arms. Before I sew the sleeve piece, I want, I want to pin it because it's a little bit slippery and the edges can misalign and then you also have to be concerned about the fringe and so you need to come in far enough from the fringe. So I'm going to be about um, more than an eighth of an inch in. You just need enough to turn it, you know, just enough space so you can reach in and turn it. I've sewn the edges and now I'll reach in with this loop turner and sort of hook it on the end and turn it right side out. It can be a little bit tricky to get this going, but you know, there's lots of ways to do it. You could do the, um, the safety pin, you know, through or a bodkin. I just kind of, I have one of these, it's called a loop turner and it works for me. So now I will insert this pipe cleaner and you can tell that the pipe cleaner is considerably shorter. So the pipe cleaner is right there. So I have enough space on the ends to tie little knots, which are supposed to represent the hands. We'll see how this turns out. Okay, so that will be my first little hand. And then I'll push the, um, the pipe cleaner all the way to the edge there. And then I have this much on the end here to tie the second overhand knot. So here is what the arms and hands look like. Just this little tube of pink with a knot in each end. Okay, here we go. This is the arm piece. 
It's a tube of the ribbon with the four inches of pipe cleaner in the center and a knot on each end. So I'll fold this in half. I like to keep the seam sort of centered along the length. And then I'm gonna glue this to the back of her neck and sort of fold the arms down. So I'll glue this right there. I'll hold it for a second and then just kind of pull the arms down and just get them out of the way for a minute. Later on, we'll shape the arms and she'll be holding some flowers. For the hair, I'm using this natural colored loopy mohair. I'm going to um, hold the, the end with these two fingers and wrap six times. One and two, wait, hold on. One and two and three and four and five and six. I only need one bundle of hair for this project. Cut a long streamer and then, this is the only part that's tricky, Take the second end and go all the way around the bundle in the center like that. And then pick up the first end and tie it off. And if it seems a little bit tricky, I do have a video describing it called Ruby's Hair Technique. Don't, don't cut the ends too short here because sometimes you can use these as bangs and if you cut them too short and it comes untied, then you have to start over and you don't want that. So this is six loops and this is enough for the entire wig. Okay, so I will apply some glue to the very top of her head and then place the center of the bundle there. And then I will continue to sort of glue and arrange the loops. I do need to cover the back of her head because that will show. The wings cover it a little bit, but not completely. I've got some glue on the back now, so I'm gonna press some of these loops into the back, like this. That looks good. And then from the front, I'll press these loops in and sort of twist and arrange. This side looks better than this side. So I'm gonna work on that. I'll glue this one down first, like this. And then this side. A little more glue in here, and then I'm going to press that one yarn over. There we go, there's her hair. And now I'm going to add a halo. I have a short piece of 20 gauge gold wire, which I'm going to shape into a U like this. And then I'll add a little bit of glue to each end and then press those into the sides of her hair like a headband kind of. There we go. Then I have a length of this golden white baker's twine on a needle. I'm just sewing through the hair behind the halo to create a hanging loop from this golden white baker's twine. Then I'll tie an overhand knot in the top and trim the excess. Great, she's looking good. We just have a few more finishing touches. First of all, I want to arrange her arms and sort of, you know, form a circle like this so that she looks like she's holding something. Now I will create a bouquet for her to hold in her arms here. I have this bundle of, or I should say a stem of paper forget-me-nots in pastel shades. I've also done it with all white flowers, but I like a little bit of color. So 
I'm wrapping this with ivory florist tape just below the flowers. This tape is pretty sticky, but um, if you feel like it's not super secure, you can always add glue to the tape. Then I'm gonna cut it off about a quarter of an inch, so it's kind of through the center of the tape wrap. And then I'll add some hot glue and press this into her arms. It's just hot glue on the base there. And then I'm gonna add this into her, sort of into her waist like this. Cute. It looks like they're a little more on this side, but I like that, that's cute. Now I like to add a little bit of sparkle here. So I've chosen these Jolie's Boutique Stars. I like the glitter ones more than these that look kind of like studs, but they're plastic. So I like um, this, well, let's see, are these the same? Yes, I like this shape the best. They are adhesive, but I never trust the adhesive. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glue. I mean, you know, they're designed to stick to paper. So we're asking a lot of them. So I just stick the star on her bodice like this. Cute. Just for a little bit of sparkle. And then of course the wings are gonna go on the back of her neck. This side has the knot, so I'm gonna apply the glue here and then press that onto the back of her neck. And we are done. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.